Hello, I'm Amy Hollingworth, the director of the Safe Sports Network, and I'm here today with Dr. McManus talking about um, exercise-induced atrial fibrillation. So thank you for being with us here today. Um, Dr. McManus, can you tell us what you feel is the most important takeaway point about exercise-induced atrial fibrillation in regards to athletes, parents, or coaches? Sure. So. Um the take home point for athletes, parents, or coaches would be as follows. First of all, AFib is a very common heart rhythm problem. Uh, it can be related to participation at high levels in endurance athletic sports. It can also be something that's commonly seen among, typically it wouldn't be the younger folks, but people over 40 who are participating in athletics or undergoing certain procedures, physical therapy programs. So it's, it's out there, first of all, something an awareness factor would be something I want people to think about. But um, the thing I also want them to know is that in general, exercise is safe for people with respect to their cardiovascular risk in general, their hearts benefit from exercise, if you will. Um, but in certain select situations, particularly middle-aged men, if they exercise too much, and there does appear to be a dose response effect, uh, and they're doing too much uh, endurance athletics, typically over 1,500 hours logged a year. It's quite a bit. There is a signal that their hearts may enlarge and put them at risk for an arrhythmia called AFib. I think uh, that's something that generally people are very attentive to. Um, I see a lot of people now using smartwatches. I see you have one that are capable of monitoring their pulse. At gyms, a lot of people are going with these MyZone belts or different heart monitor devices where they're competing with one another. And I would just say that if a person were to notice a very rapid pulse themselves or feel unwell, short of breath, palpitations, or notice a very fast pulse on their monitor, their watch, or their device that they're using at the gym, they may not want to blow that off. And in fact, they may want to mention it to their internist and undergo some further testing. That would be my take home point for the parents, the coaches, the trainers, uh, and, and uh, the patients themselves. If you're feeling, and perhaps it's the same on um, the, the actual cardiac devices where if you're feeling like perhaps you're having some atrial fibrillation, you can have an app on your phone and, yep. and get a little quick EKG yep. kit that can then go to you. Where does that, is where does that stand? So in, in, in 2018, there's only one device, in the U.S. at least, that has an FDA approval for use in that capacity, and it's called the Alive Core uh, uh, device. Um, and it's a little credit card sized EKG that you can put your fingers on, and it can be transferred to your doc via email, or they can be sent up to a, a server where they can read it. So it's a, it's a way of communicating. And it's, it's, it's been proven to be accurate enough to get FDA approval. Now, what does 30 seconds potentially of AFib mean clinically? That's more debatable um, because we really don't know, is AFib like radiation where there's like no safe amount, even one second of AFib is a problem? Or is there a threshold where we probably all have been having these problems but just not being aware of it in many cases? And so this subclinical or undiagnosed brief AFib case, as, as doctors and healthcare providers, I think we have to be cautious about generalizing I'm not sure that what's good for the goose is good for the gander, that the athlete that's diagnosed with brief episodes of AFib, that we have to treat them the same as our older, more sedentary patient who comes in and is diagnosed in the conventional way in the office or hospital with having AFib. And so I think th this is something we will figure out. We've got some ongoing studies to help figure it out. I am really in favor of patients using these devices because I think that it helps them feel more comfortable in many cases. It helps me because I, I, get, I, I get these daily from patients and I, I like to stay in touch and connected with them. I think they, they like that and I like knowing what's going on with them. So in general, I like them, but I would just say that we have to be careful about um, comparing them to uh, conventional medical tests that have had a different, the EKG was invented in 1903. We've had a little bit of a track record to figure out what the heck to do with it and what it means, but uh, this device is so new that I, I hesitate to recommend it for all. But I think particularly what's interesting is the people using it now are the most tech savvy athletic type people, right? The people who are investing their own money and buying it. They're the people actually at least risk of problems. The people we need to be having use this are our moms and dads and grandparents um, who tend to be most resistant to using them. So there's a mismatch between who buys them and who you, know, you would actually act on typically. But that being said, I think uh, it's a great thing to connect doctors and patients together. So I think that these devices are very exciting. 
the FDA approved device Alive Core is something I'm comfortable interpreting and you'll see I'm sure three or four more devices in the next year or two come out that are also approved. Excellent. Well thank you for your time yeah, Dr. Thank you. McManus. Appreciate Have it. Have a great day. Thank you.